Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Greetings. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabbir and today we are going to talk on Introduction to English Language, World English's Received Pronunciation, Indian English and its Varieties. So before we go ahead, let us quickly recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, as you see in this slide, we discussed few important status and prospects of English language in India. So we studied that the English language was introduced to India during the British regime. Moreover, we also got to know that majority of the Indians considered the English language as a threat to their culture and native language. They were reluctant to submit their language and culture to the Britishers who were trying to invade India during that time. Besides, we also got to know that after the liberalization and industrialization, the quest for learning English gained momentum and people started using language for different purposes. Besides, we also got to know that English was introduced as a foreign language. However, it is now graded as a second language. So, though it was on a controversial state and a lot of debate took place, but later it was adapted as second language. So, merely the status did not remain to the foreign thing, but also it gained uh, its uh, uh, status as the second language. The fourth important, uh, fifth important in fact uh, point is that English is widely used for the purposes of administration, education and as a common link language. So as it is being widely used as second language, its purposes are also expanded. So what are these purposes? These purposes include administration, education and the language which connects from one state to the other. And also we got to know that English is now the language of communication. It is also the language of science and technology, arts and social science and trade and commerce. So a number of things are to be done and it is being in practice due to English language and it has opened up many prospects and opportunities for people living in India. Not just it is used for job purpose, but it is also used for a variety of other academic purposes. Now coming on to the uh, next slide, uh, as you know that we are going to study the dialects and we are going to get to know about the different varieties of English language. So after this section, what can you expect? You will be able to critically understand the range and variety of traditions and you will also get to know the approaches to the study of English language. Besides, you will uh, develop sound understanding of the basic terminology and concepts relevant to the study. Moreover, you will be able to apply the theoretical understanding and the knowledge to improve basic skills spoken uh, and in written communication. Now coming on to the next slide, the first question that is written in this uh, is that what is the English language, what is its origin. So what do you consider when it comes to the word English? So English language is the West Germanic language of the Indo-European language family. So it is quite obvious from this slide uh, as it is taken from an imp important source Encyclopedia Britannica and it says that its origin is mainly from the West Germanic uh, uh, language and it belongs to the family which is Indo-European and it is closely related to the Frisian, German and Dutch language. And this language uh, uh, family is also known as in Belgium called Flemish languages. Uh, the other thing which is mentioned over here with regard to the English language that it originated in England and it is the dominant language of the United States. So countries 
like United States, United Kingdom, it is considered as the dominant language. That means it is widely used and it is, uh, 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 it is uh, used in a number of uh, uh, situations and without its usage, uh, uh, the purpose would not get solved. So, it is quite dominant in United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Ireland, New Zealand and Canada and also there are places like Australia, various island nations in the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean where English is considered as the main language and it is given as the status of the native language. Now coming on to the next point, it says that it is also an official language of India. Since Britishers invaded India and after the independence we realized the importance of uh, in, uh, English education. Besides, we wanted to connect uh, India with the western world. So, we came uh, with the idea of introducing English language as an important subject in all the classrooms. Therefore, uh, English uh, is considered as the official language and also because it is the second language. So, it is also considered the official language in the Philippines, in the countries like Singapore and many countries in sub-Saharan Africa including South Africa. Besides, uh, English language is the first choice of foreign language in most of the other countries. So, if you are coming from France or you are coming from Australia and uh, you know German language, let us say you are from Germany and you are from China. So, what is the utmost requirement to get connected with the world and that is English language. So, English language is the language which is most in demand and it is the it is that status that has given it to the position of a global lingua franca. So, because of this reason it is widely considered as a lingua franca and it has connected people, it has brought people all together, it has opened up many job prospects, opportunities, employment, it has uh, negotiated the boundaries between the countries and also it has promoted globalization, industrialization, liberalization and we can now connect with people from across the globe. Now, the next point as it is mentioned over here, it is estimated that about a third of the world's population, some 2 billion persons now use English. So, it is quite obvious that uh, English is as it is a connecting uh, uh, language, it is the link language, it is the lingua franca. So, a majority of the population that is there in the globe is largely uh, speaking uh, English language and it is the requirement obviously. So, that is what the whole perspective when it comes to the English language and uh, like uh, it is mentioned at the beginning that uh, it is the language which comes from the Indo-European family. And uh, though it originated in England, but it is continuously used in many countries. In fact, majority of the countries be it in the form of foreign or second language. Now, coming on to the next uh, slide, let me explain you an important concept that was introduced by Kachru's um, uh, uh, circles. And you know, when we talk about this model, we will get to know that how uh, the native countries uh, are related with the countries where English is not spoken as a major language. But somehow English are there in the circles and they are considered very important. So, let us try to look up at this model and understand it very carefully. I am going to draw circles and I am going to draw uh, this uh, uh, Kachru's model in the form of diagrammatic representation. So, let us see how it goes up. Uh, the inner circle basically there are three circles which are supposed to be drawn over here. Now, as you see the inner circle is there which is quite smaller and this inner circle represents countries like United States and United Kingdom. where English is considered as the dominant language or it is the place where English comes from. Then there comes the outer circle. So, this outer circle is slightly different from the inner circle in terms of the fact that outer circle, uh, you know, represents countries uh, like India where English is considered as second language. So, I am writing over here. Uh, example is India 
or you can also take the example of Nigeria. The outermost circle which you see in this diagram is the expanding circle. So, when I say expanding circle, I refer to the countries where English is considered as foreign language. So, what are the countries which uh, consider English as foreign language? These are China, Russia, Brazil and so on. So, if you look up at these circles, you will eventually get to know that uh, English is widely con uh, connecting the world and uh, this particular model represents a wonderful idea of how English is spoken throughout. So, let me take you to the fact that this inner circle as you see in this slide, this inner circle refers to English as it originally took shape and was spread across the world in the first diaspora. So, in this transplantation of English, speakers from England like I said UK and uh, uh, other countries like uh, North America, Australia and New Zealand, right. So, th these are the countries where English is considered as the native, as, as the dominant language and the inner circle thus represents the traditional, historical and socio-linguistic basis of English. Right, and uh, not just these factors are there, but also it is used as a primary language. The other important point to mention over here is uh, that the United Kingdom, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland and Anglophone Canada are the countries which consider this status of English. Now, English is the native language, also it is the mother tongue of most people in these countries. And the other important thing, thing to mention over here is that the total number of English speakers in the inner circle is as high as 380 million <coughs> people of whom some 120 million are outside the United States. Now, coming on to the second circle, which is the outer circle of English uh, and it was produced by the second diaspora of English language and it spread the language through imperial ex uh, expansion by Great Britain in Asia and Africa. So, Britishers came into these countries, they imposed their uh, education system and with the education system they brought English language and that is how these countries have adopted the English education system and also considered English as the, uh, as the language which is uh, dominant in administration and for other important purposes like in India. So, when I talk about the outer circle as you see in this slide, uh, it was produced by the second diaspora of uh, English and uh, uh, it is mainly present in Asia and Africa and in these regions English is not the native tongue but serve as useful lingua franca. between ethnic and language groups. So, if one state wants to connect with the people who belong to different state, then they consider English as the linked language. Besides, as you see in this slide, higher education, the, legis uh, the legislature and the judiciary, national commerce and so on may all be carried out predominantly in English. So, this circle includes the countries like India, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Malaysia, Kenya, South Africa, the Philippines and so on. So, these were some of the countries oh, that were colonized by US also. Uh, however, at this uh, point of time we can say that they were in first invaded by the Britishers and that is how the English was introduced into these countries. Now, coming on to the next important point that is the expanding 
circle this is the outermost circle and you will be surprised to know that it encompasses countries where english plays no historical and no governmental role but it is nevertheless widely used as a medium of international communication this includes much of the rest of the world's population not categorized in the uh, inner circle and the in the outer circle and um, these countries uh, include china nepal russia um, japan non anglophone europe especially the netherlands and nordic countries south korea and egypt the total in this expanding circle is uh, is 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 almost is the most difficult to estimate especially because english may be employed for specific or limited purpose usually in a business context so the estimates of these users range from 100 million to around 100 billion and the inner circle as you see in the slide is a norm providing that means that english language norms are developed in these countries the outer circle is norm developing and the expanding circle is norm dependent because it relies on the standards set by the native speakers so uh, english is the uh, unique language and it is widely connecting the world and this model is uh, uh, extensively studied and illustrated by kachru uh, and uh, this is quite famous and uh, he gave the idea of the um, three circles of english now coming on to the next important slide and that is pluri centric english so what is a pluricentric english or pluricentric language basically is the one that sometimes called as a, plu, a polycentric language and uh, it uh, comes up with different standard varieties it originates from different states sometimes from different regions dialects or communities so when we say dialects it means we refer to varieties and without precluding the unity of the language so english is the unique uh, pluricentric language and in functional terms it is the most widely used international language in such specialized domains as aviation radio broadcasting navigation military tourism science and technology and it also penetrated casual communication between uh, uh, strangers on a large scale now what are the examples of pluricentric english so the examples are that english including different standards such as british english american english australian english and now we also have general indian english that is Uh, referred as gie uh, the other uh, examples can be traced from india itself so we have hindustani language or hindi urdu language which is a mixture of both the languages and in, it includes two main differing standards which are either hindi uh, dominant in india and urdu dominant in pakistan so it is how you know uh, it is connecting uh, Uh, the, uh, the 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 different forms of uh, one language the other one is galician portuguese including different standards such as european portuguese brazilian portuguese and galician so a variety is there but uh, with variety there comes a concept that says that it originates from different states and it has different regions coming from different dialects and communities and it uh doesn't uh, separate um with respect to the region religion and so on now there are two basic characteristics with respect to the english language so first that it performs the flexibility of function 
and second that it gives out the idea of openness of the vocabulary. So, as you see in this slide the two options are quite popular with regard to the usage when I say flexibility of function. So, it generally means that it has grown over the last five centuries. Also that this, uh, res, uh, this development has taken place as a consequence of the loss of inflections. So, words formally distinguished as nouns or verbs by differences in their forms are now often used as both nouns and verbs. One can speak for example um, of planning a table or tabling a plan booking a place or placing a book, lifting a thumb or thumbing a lift. I can give you another example which is quite common. We have uh, for example, this pen and uh, when I say this is an object, it simply refers to the noun. So, this object is basically a noun, but I am sure you would have seen uh, many uh, courtrooms in the movies or television or if you have personally come across with such situations, you would come to know that we often see the advocate coming up saying I object your honor. So, this object is basically referring to the um, verb and this is mainly used as a doer of the function. Uh, so, what I am trying to tell you here is that the same thing which was first considered as noun can also be considered as verb in different situation and in different aspect. So, that is what the flexibility of uh, function refers to and that is how the English language is bringing up this concept uh, by resulting it in itself into characteristic. The second point as you see in this slide says openness of vocabulary. Now, openness of vocabulary uh, implies free admission of words. From other languages and the ready creation of compounds and derivatives. In English language, we see a number of examples where we have taken words from different languages. We have taken uh, uh, charpai for example from Hindi language and it does exist in English as well. Nowadays, bazaar is also accepted and it is being borrowed uh, from the Hindi language. There are other several examples we have taken from Latin, Greek, um, in fact uh, uh, from Hindi itself and Persian and so on. So, uh, that is one of the characteristics of uh, the English language that besides being flexible, it is very open with regard to its acceptance. So, its words can be taken from different uh, languages and that is how the composition of English language keeps on upgrading. Right, and uh, like I mentioned in this slide that there are free admission of words. Let me tell you that words from more than 350 languages have entered English in this way. Like French, Spanish, Russian, English frequently forms scientific terms from classical Greek word elements. And although a Germanic language in its sounds and grammar, the bulk of English vocabulary is in fact Romance uh, or classical in origin. I hope you have understood the concept of both uh, the important functions that is the flexibility and the openness. So, English is quite broad and open to accepting varieties as well as it performs different functions with respect to different context and in situations. Now, coming on to the next slide, as you see there is uh, a point written over here that is dialect and when we say dialect, we refer to a variety of language that signals where a person comes from. So, it means uh, uh, we have multiple representation of English language depending upon the regions and even the sub regions. 
so the notion is usually interpreted geographically and uh, it is mainly based on regional variety but it also has some application in relation to a person's social background so uh, likewise we have class dialect also or occupation dialect also so there are varieties and even sub varieties so mainly two important uh, categorization is there one that uh, regional uh, variety exist and also that social background uh, occupational background also result in in a different kind of language dialect the other important point that is mentioned over here says that a dialect is chiefly distinguished from other dialects of the same language by features of linguistic structure so grammar is specifically referred because especially morphology and syntax and vocabulary so uh, how um, one variety is di distinguished from the other variety it is distinguished on the basis of the grammatical structure it is mainly discussed on the uh, level of syntactic level the word arrangement order and uh, that's how we keep on distinguishing between the varieties so um, uh, these are the parameters as you see in the slide on the basis of which we uh, differentiate so morphology which mainly refers to uh, the uh, composition of words and also the syntax which means the syntactic level the grammatical level the structural level the linguistic level at the front uh, would be taken up into consideration in order to differentiate these two now coming on to the next point as mentioned in the slide says that the examples of dialectal differences include american english subway you know contrasting with british english underground so at some uh, places the subway is considered for uh, a place where you know you need to move from one place to the other and take a underground uh, a uh, way to go through so in other uh, context or in other dialect we say underground itself so um, you know uh, in american english especially subway is more common however in british english underground is more common in use and uh, maze for example in the united states uh, wheat in england and oats in scotland so you see the meaning is same right and we refer to one particular thing only but we say a different uh, 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 words in different context now i can give you some other examples we have spelling differentiation as well so when i say spelling differentiation i mean that you are writing for example color c o l o u r now this color uh, the spelling of this word stands with c o l o u r but in american english uh, the spelling of the color is c o l r o r similarly we have many different words like program in british english we write p r o g r a w m e but in american english we say it as p r o g r a m and so on and you will also find that in pronunciation a lot of differentiation happens so like in american english ra is mainly rolled like um, uh, you know you you um, roll your tongue in order to produce r sound and there are examples in british english where you don't need to even produce ra sound it is generally skipped so for example if you are saying water w a t e r you don't have to pronounce ra in that way and you say water and not uh, pronouncing the ra or you are not uh, uh, taking up into consideration so water a uh, is being the last sound where, where you uh, put up your uh, stop so that's what i'm trying to tell you is that there are differences when it comes to the articulation when it comes to representation in the form of writing and also when it comes to the grammatical and the syntactical structure and one of the important examples that we often come across especially on browsing internet we get confused of the spellings that what should i write should i write c o l o u r or c o l o r 
right so you know these are the varieties these are the uh, differences and uh, the american english and the british english is one of the examples of the regional differentiation and like i said in the second point other differentiation also takes place for example person's social background the occupation and the class of the individual to which it belongs to received pronunciation that we will also study in this uh, session uh, uh, talks about the use of language uh, spoken in a particular uh, uh, society now coming on to the next point which is the last one in the slide it says that nevertheless dialects of the same language differ this still possesses a common core features because they are the entities of the same language they refer to one common meaning but the representation keeps on differing like color like as we have taken the example it means it may mean uh, same in different languages but uh, the representation uh, keeps on uh, differing so that's what dialect uh, mainly refers to and that's how the dialect comes uh, into the english language now coming on to the next slide it is about world englishes englishes is a popular term and it is widely accepted why because we say that a varieties of english exist now english is no more a one particular language which is spoken in united kingdom but it has come with a lot of uh, mother of tongue interferences and it has rejuvenated the idea of different varieties so world englishes exist what does its um, uh, meaning Uh, contain and how it is used. Let us look up at in this slide. So, world Englishes is a term for emerging localized or indigenous uh, varieties of English: Australian English, American English, British English, General Indian English, and so on. So, what are they? These are the varieties, and these. varieties represent the fact that english is no more one particular language but it has a number of other dimensions its horizon is large its its projection is broad especially varieties that have developed in territories influenced by the united kingdom or the united states so like i said in the last um, slide and last to last one as well that uh, english came up from the united kingdom because it was largely dominated uh, 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 because most of the countries were the colony of the british church so they brought the english and with every region there uh, came the emergence of the new english the new concept of producing it right so as the second point of the slide says that the study of world englishes consist of identifying varieties of english used in diverse socio linguistic contexts globally and analyzing how socio linguistic histories multicultural backgrounds and context of functions influence the use of english in different regions of the world so the study of world englishes uh, includes so many things what are these these include varieties that come from different socio linguistic backgrounds and also uh, the study of uh, world englishes include the analysis that how the history of invasion how the multicultural backgrounds different situations and context and their functions have influenced the language so that's how the concept of world englishes got evolved now coming on to the next slide as you see the, there is again written uh, englishes and uh, let us uh, look uh, this concept in a deeper way the notions of world english and world englishes are far from similar so they are not similar and they may get differentiated on different aspects so although the terms are often mistakenly used interchangeably we often think that american english and british english it's uh, same but they are different some are more gra grammatical some are less grammatical some are uh, you know uh, uh, some contain more letters in the spelling some contain less some represents the shorter and the other one comes up with abbreviations and so on so a detailed version of the english is there but there is a lot of interference of the mother tongue and the immigration uh, uh, 
um, people who immigrate from different countries they also uh, merge themselves with the english language and then they evolve a different variety of it so we cannot say that it is merely the one language that we are studying or one language that we are referring to english has different uh, scenarios different uh, entities that are coming through and that is one of the reasons why english is the term english is came into being coming on to the second point world english refers to the english language as a lingua franca so wherever we say world english right it refers to the language that is lingua franca which mainly means that it is used in different purposes right it is mainly used in business it is mainly used for the purpose of trade it is also taken up into consideration when it comes uh, the matter of diplomacy and other spheres of global activity so all these purposes are being solved with english language and that is the reason why we are considering english as the global frank uh, franca now while world english is refers to the different varieties of english and english based creoles developed in different regions of the world so uh, we can say that um, varieties exist different forms of english language exist and uh, like uh, pidgin creoles are there uh, by pidgin i mean that um, uh, there is uh, the uh, that that the non native speakers uh, of a different language adopt the english language and they also introduced their own uh, language and then a mixture is evolved so this mixture is mainly referred to the pidgin term and uh, this pidgin when becomes advanced when it is accepted when it is used widely and it is considered a separate language it becomes an adult mainly then we accept it as creole so pidgin and creole both are two important terms pidgin is a former stage creole is a later stage so uh, mainly we see that people coming from different uh, countries they find themselves dwelled into english language and also they bring their own identities their own language and culture and with time they find themselves in a position to mix both the languages and that's where the concept of pidgin came into being however with the advancement with the utilization of different uh, uh, you know scenarios they they keep on advancing this mixture and this picture uh, pay, uh, uh, mixture uh, the, the, this composition of two different entities results in creole now like uh, it is mentioned over here world english is refers to the different varieties of english and also there exist english creoles and that developed in different regions of the world so because english was uh, the language of invasion and uh, british ruled uh, in many of the countries and it was said that uh, the sun never sat Uh, british sun never sat in any part of the world so uh, you know um, it means that a number of countries in fact majority of the countries of the world were uh, invaded by britishers and uh, therefore the influence in language also came because the ultimate mode of communication is the language and the main language which was mainly forced was english language so people came up introducing their own language and they mixed up with the english language and they came up with the idea of english based creoles now the third point as it is mentioned over here is alternatively the term global englishes has been used by scholars in the field to emphasize the more recent spread of english due to globalization which has resulted in increased usage of english as a lingua franca so the term which is which which is global englishes it is widely used by scholars and it is mainly meant to emphasize to prioritize the concept that the spread of english has taken place uh, because of the uh, industrialization liberalization privatization and has uh, resulted in the increased use of language i hope you have understood the idea of english let us now come uh, to the different varieties of english language uh, that exist in the world so we have scottish uh, language 
right uh, scottish english then we have jody we also have yorkshire we have welsh we have brummy we have west country and one of the most popular and famous uh, variety of uh, varieties of english languages received pronunciation also known as rp if you browse uh, the british broadcasting you will get to know about the pronunciation pattern of the rp which is widely uh, spoken in a small portion of the united kingdom how this rp came into being and what is its existence how many people speak Uh, rp that we will consider and what status do we give when it comes to rp why rp is considered as a standardized or is it not even considered the standardized that we will look up at uh, it in the next slide so in this slide let me tell you before i take up you to to, to the each uh, to each point rp is considered as the standard variety of the english language i am writing over here standard variety however a lot of political debate has happened over it because people have come uh, with the idea that uh, uh, if we consider rp the standardized then what about other forms of the language uh, that took place throughout the world why are we not considering other languages or other fusion of uh, english languages as standardized what is its reason and uh, that is one of the reasons why people have uh, disregarded the use of rp as a standardized and also as model so they considered their own uh, language uh, uh, that occurred in the form of english as a standardized one so the example is general indian english general indian english is no more influenced by the received pronunciation model is it is the model of the indian speakers only mother interfere mother tongue interference uh, take place and we come up with the idea of producing a language which is its uh, independent on its own so let us go step by step the point one says that rp didn't exist in the 19 16th century however in england people in the southeast around the capital of the course considered their way of speaking to be superior so a small portion of the united kingdom considered rp as their language and they thought that it is the superior uh, form of the language and they kept on using it and prioritizing it emphasizing it for the purpose of making it superior and dominant now the second point says that by the end of the 18th century the accent used there by the upper classes had become the uh, pronunciation to imitate if wanted one wanted to appear cultured so like this kind of pronunciation dominated in such a way that when people wanted to speak they were asked to imitate a, a received pronunciation why because received pronunciation the rp was considered the most standardized form and it was uh, presented in such a way that rp is the most cultured form of the english language and it should be obeyed it should be imitated it should be modeled however like i said uh, at the first place there were a lot of political debates with respect to its utilization and standardization and its copy imitation so uh, initially when it was introduced and also when its accent was presented to the world it uh, was mainly used by the upper class and they emphasized that its pronunciation should be imitated it should be considered as model and it is the most cultured uh, pronunciation of the english language and even today we see a variety of channels uh, uh, on television uh, where uh, Uh, the rp is uh, followed the imitate the pronunciation uh, that is prescribed by rp now the third point says a social mobility became more viable the demands of an up and coming middle class wanting to speak in a way that would not be criticized or judged badly by those from higher society group so upper middle class and the middle class and uh, the upper class so the upper class and the middle class were differentiated on the basis of the language varieties 
that they spoke. So, what I am trying to emphasize over here is that the social mobility became more viable because uh, there was a demand from the middle class uh, families to follow the RP because it was considered as the model one and they wanted to speak, they wanted to imitate in order to be uh, cultured and also they did not want to you know be criticized or judged badly from those uh, higher society. So, there was a differentiation which was taking place, social divide was taking place between people who come from higher socioeconomic strata and people who come from lower socioeconomic strata. So, language differentiation happened, uh, uh, RP was spoken by higher uh, socioeconomic strata people. However, the lower socioeconomic strata people were trying to copy uh, the, uh, the, the higher uh, socioeconomic people so that they do not get discriminated on the basis of their language, their dialect and so on. So, it somehow came up with the fact that uh, RP tried to dominate as an accent and um, it presented itself as the most accurate and the appropriate one. Now, the last, uh, second last point as mentioned in this slide says that lessons in correct pronunciation also known as elocution lessons became more common and an elocution movement grew to meet these demands. So, it was widely getting accepted, people were rushing after uh, uh, after acquiring uh, these kind of pronunciations, so a number of programs were introduced, the allocation uh, lessons were came into being. Now, the last point as mentioned in the slide says that the term received came into use meaning the kind of pronunciation that was socially accepted, accepted because it had been passed down by the higher orders in society from one generation to the uh, next. So, this term received is mainly emphasized in the sentence. It means the uh, kind, uh, the variety, the, 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 uh, the type of pronunciation that was considered superior, that was cons considered uh, socially cultured and it uh, passed by mainly higher orders from one generation to the other. So, people from different uh, generations kept on following the received pronunciation. One more important point that I would like to mention over here as far as the received pronunciation is concerned, as you see in this slide, it is that uh, uh, received pronunciation um, uh, uh, was mainly spoken by Southeast people. So, it was around the capital of course and it considered their way of speaking to be superior. The other point which I would like to uh, restate is that by the 18th century, uh, century, the accent used there by the upper class had become the pronunciation to uh, imitate. The next point which I would like to emphasize over here that as social mobility became more in demand, the demands of an up and coming middle class wanted to you know follow up uh, and they did not want to be judged and did not want to be you know uh, cr criticized. So, there was a differentiation that took place between people who come from different class background and so on and lessons on correct pronunciation came into being. So, that is how the modeling of RP uh, came into the place. Now, coming on to the next point which says general Indian English. Why we are talking about general Indian English mainly because uh, it is the variety which is accepted in English language and it says that we need not to imitate received pronunciation, we have our own identity, we have our language which is quite independent that is English, but people here are free as uh, as far as its use is concerned and uh, when it is intelligible enough, uh, when its communication is clear enough, then uh, there is no need to imitate or make any other dialect as a model. So, let us go point, by, uh, point wise and see what general Indian English brings to our table. Indian English is a group of English dialects spoken in the Republic of India and among the Indian diaspora. So, like a person who is there uh, in the Kashmir would be speaking English language and his pronunciation would be influenced by the Kashmiri accent. Similarly, a person coming from Odisha 
would be speaking English language, the words and the uh, syntactic structure would be English itself, but the resemblance in pronunciation would highly match the Odia language. So, uh, the interference of mother tongue is acknowledged and accepted in, on a soft note. English is used by the Indian government for communication along with Hindi as enshrined in the constitution of India. And uh, since it is a part of the uh, uh, administration, it is uh, mainly used for communication, it is uh, mainly used for connecting people across states, it is the language of constitution also. So, we can eventually say that English is, uh, this English which is the general Indian English is accepted and it is used in a variety of uh, context. English is also an official language in several states and several union territories of India and the additional official language in seven other states and one union territory. In this point, I have tried to mention the status that is being given in the, uh, in, the, in, the uh, in different states and seven union territories of India, seven states are there where official language is considered English and which English? It is nowhere of received pronunciation, it is not a Scottish or a Welsh uh, English, it is the general Indian English which is used. The last point as mentioned over here in this slide says that English is the sole official language of the Indian judiciary. So, in the judiciary context also English is used used and which kind of English is there, which dialect is used that is the general Indian English or GIE, also IE. Unless the state governor or legislature mandates the use of a regional language or if the president of India has given approval for the use of regional languages in courts. So, generally in the judiciary system in the courts, English is the dominant language. However, if the president of India or the judiciary itself uh, nominates the regional language as the uh, mode of communication, then it would be considered. Otherwise, this general Indian English is purely uh, coming uh, from its uh, root that exists in India itself. Now, I would like to tell you before I take up on the other slide, like you have uh, gone through all the four points that are necessary for understanding the concept of general Indian English. Let me tell you that most Indians who uh, learn English, uh, learn their own Indian language before they are exposed to English. And in other words, they have in them very strongly formal linguistic habits when they attempt to learn English and these linguistic habits are bound to interfere with their learning English like I talked about the interference of the mother tongue pronunciation. The third important point which I would like to specially state over here that many Indians used uh, you know different uh, uh, voiced labio uh, 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 dental approximate like we say wa at some places we use wa right. So, differentiation occurs uh, in many places we say uh, is cool. However, the pronunciation that comes with Britishers is cool not is cool, but because of the mother tongue of uh, interference. Uh, there are lot of uh, uh, varieties that uh, has taken place and it is very open. The, when I say it is, I mean general Indian English is open with regard to its usage. The other important point I would like to mention over here is that the result is that these and other such regional features render the English speech of Indians unintelligible even to fellow Indian. So, there are indeed many varieties of English spoken in India such as Tamil English, Telugu English, Kannad English, Urdu English, Punjabi English mainly because of the regional uh, interference, uh, regional language interference. So, even in India, 
you know a varieties of uh, language exist and in hindi language also we come across with a varieties of it and um, uh, similarly uh, we have braj bhasha we have uh, um, uh, uh, other languages that are quite uh, prevalent and are widely spoken and since india is a multicultural country we see the mix of cultures the mix of languages and thousands of dialects that are present over here i'm sure you have got a clear idea what received pronunciation is what general indian english is what are its varieties and uh, what kind of imitation do we expect when we talk about rp as a model or uh, why don't we consider rp as a model and what are the norms in accordance with it now coming on to the summary modern english is widely considered to be the lingua franca of the world so it is not the rp it is not the gie it is the language which connects the world it is the language which has diminished the boundaries between the countries so that is the reason why we are saying lingua franca which is used in different purposes which is used in different platforms and um, you know um, it is communicative it is intelligible when it comes to its usage now the second point as mentioned in the summary says that about a third of the world's population now use english we studied the uh, model that represents inner circle outer circle and the uh, expanding circle and we talked about that how the uh, native speakers of english language are connected with the speakers of uh, those countries where english is considered as the second language and then we came out to the expanding circle where english is not considered as second or the native language however they are considered as the foreign language like russia like Ch uh, china and japan and so on so we also uh, came to know that english language provides flexibility of function and openness of the vocabulary so when we say flexibility it means like one word which is considered as noun can also be considered as verb in different contexts and situations with the with different usage the flexibility would keep on occurring and then we also have the idea of openness of vocabulary in english language which simply refers to the fact that english has borrowed a number of words from different languages now coming on to the next point world englishes like we talked about refers to the difference in the english language that emerge as it is used in various contexts across the world so we understood the fact that english is not just the one but a varieties of it exist now english is no more more the english it is the englishes and uh, we got to know about the american english the british english the australian english the scottish english welsh english and uh, general indian english the rp received pronunciation and so on now coming on to the next point general indian english emerged when most of the indians strongly formed linguistic habits while attempting to learn english uh, language so we also understood the concept of dialect and we got to know that mainly dialects are divided on the basis of two important pub, uh, things what are these two things first that they are divided on the basis of the region so one region would be speaking one form of the language and the other region would be speaking the different form of the language just like we have the example of the british and american english but we also came to know that within the country like united kingdom we have different varieties so rp is considered the superior one the other forms of the language would not be considered as a superior one or may not be so why i am saying is because i would like to prioritize or emphasize that dialects exist and dialects exist not only on the basis of region but also on a base uh, but also on the basis of other important features such as occupational and we have uh, business class and so on english possesses a system of orthography that does not have accurately reflect the pronunciation of words like you may write ch Uh, in the word like chair but this ch can be pronounced as ka in the word like chorus 
but cha in the word like chair. So, there is a difference when it comes to uh, the orthography and the reflection of the pronunciation of words. That RP has never been a mainstream accent used by a large section of the population. It was a minority accent and it was used by less than 5 percent of the population. These are the sources from where I have taken this information, but I am sure you have learnt a lot. Thank you very much for joining. I'll see you in the next session.